Robert Fulton by Scientific American, edited by Rufus Porter, for the LibriVox Coffee Break Collection 11, Science. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Larry Wilson. Robert Fulton by Scientific American, edited by Rufus Porter, from Scientific American, Volume 2, Number 1, September 26, 1846, for the LibriVox Coffee Break Collection, 11, Science. Robert Fulton, a celebrated engineer whose name is connected with steamboat navigation, was born in the town of Little Britain, in the state of Pennsylvania, in 1765. His genius disclosed itself at an early period. He was attracted to the shops of mechanics, and at the age of seven he painted landscapes and portraits in Philadelphia. Thus he was enabled in part to purchase a small farm for his widowed mother. At the age of twenty-one he, by the advice of his friends, repaired to London, to place himself under guidance of Mr. West, the painter, and by him was kindly received and admitted as an inmate of the house for several years prosecuting his business as painter he spent two years in devonshire where he became acquainted with the duke of bridgewater and with lord stanhope well known for his attachment to the mechanic arts in seventeen ninety three he engaged in the project of improving inland navigation and in seventeen ninety six obtained patents for double inclined plane and for machines for spinning flax and making ropes the subject of canals now chiefly occupied his attention and at this period in seventeen ninety six his work on canals was published in his profession of civil engineer he was greatly benefited by his skill in drawing and painting he went to paris in seventeen ninety seven and being received into the family of joel barlow he there spent seven years studying chemistry physics and mathematics and acquiring a knowledge of the french italian and german languages in december seventeen ninety seven he made his first experiment on submarine explosion in the seine but without success his plan for a submarine boat was afterwards perfected in eighteen o one while he was residing with his friend mr barlow he met in paris chancellor livingston the american minister who explained to him the importance in america of navigating boats by steam mr fulton had already conceived the project as early as seventeen ninety three as appears by his letter to lord stanhope he now engaged anew in the affair and at the common expense of himself and mr livingston built the boat on the seine in eighteen o three and successfully navigated the river the principles of the steam engine he did not invent he claimed only the application of that machine to water wheel for propelling vessels in eighteen o six he returned to america he and mr livingston built in eighteen o seven the first boat the claremont one hundred thirty feet in length which navigated the hudson at the rate of five miles an hour nothing could exceed the surprise and admiration of all who witnessed the experiment the minds of the most incredulous were changed in a few minutes before the boat had made the progress of a quarter of a mile the greatest unbeliever must have been converted the man who while he looked on the expensive machine thanked his stars that he had more wisdom than to waste his money on such idle schemes changed the expression of his features as the boat moved from the wharf and gained her speed and this complacent expression gradually softened into one of wonder the jeers of the ignorant who had neither sense nor feeling to suppress their contemptuous ridicule and rude jokes were silenced for a moment by a vulgar astonishment which deprived them of the power of utterance till the triumph of genius extorted from the incredulous multitude which crowded the shores shouts and acclamations of congratulation and applause in february eighteen o nine he took out his first patent in eighteen eleven and eighteen twelve he built two steam ferry boats for crossing the hudson 
He contrived also a very ingenious floating dock for the reception of those boats. In 1813, he obtained a patent for a submarine battery. Conceiving the plan of a steam man-of-war, the government in March 1814 appropriated $320,000 for constructing it and appointed him the engineer. In about four months, she was launched with the name of Fulton I. But before this frigate was finished, Fulton had paid the debt of nature. End of Robert Fulton by Scientific American Edited by Rufus Porter For the LibriVox Coffee Break Collection 11 Science